Hey, welcome to Atlee Church. We're so glad that you decided to join us for today's service, no matter where you find yourself on your spiritual journey. Just to let you know a little bit about Atlee, Atlee is a safe place for those who've given up on church or never went. And our mission is simple, to reach seekers and equip believers to love God, love themselves, love others, and serve the world. Now, if you want more information about who we are as a church or ways for you to get connected, make sure to check out our website at atleychurch.org, or you can also visit us on social media or download our app. And we hope today that you find the service helpful and also encouraging no matter where you are in life right now. So let's get started with today's service. So have you ever experienced a a big life change, a life-altering change in your lives? How many folks have experienced something like that? So when I think about a life-altering change, for me, I think about my marriage. So we each came into the marriage with just different ways of doing life, didn't we? You know, sleeping habits, something as simple as a sleeping habit. She had her sleeping habits, I had mine. Eating habits. Just the way we did things, you know, like for example, how she put the toilet paper on the toilet paper holder and I just didn't, you know what I mean? I just didn't do it. So we each came into the marriage with different ideas of how to do things. And it was a life changing moment when we came together and we took those vows of husband and wife. And then a few years go by and we have a little one. Talk about another life altering change, right? How about you guys? Can you, you know, you can relate to that, right? Well, over the past couple of years, for good or for bad, we each have had incredible life altering changes with, with the way COVID was. We weren't able to do anything. We weren't able to go anywhere. And as a result, I, I just feel like we kind of became complacent or just maybe not complacent is the word, but maybe just trying to survive, just trying to get through each and every day and, and, you, you just kind of lost your ability to dream, didn't you? And I know for me, I did. I, I, I would get depressed and just lost their ability to dream and to think outside the box. And how can I better my life? You just kind of were more con- consumed with trying to survive, if that makes any sense. Well, today I want to share with you a story of hopefully an incredible life change. Um, this just happened last Thursday. Um, and so hopefully my prayer is that it's an incredible life change in this person's life. Now, when you think about <clears throat> Dreaming Big, the series that we're in, Dreaming Big, you think about um, something that's more fun when you, when you talk about a life change, something that's more pleasing. Well, this individual has gone through a life change that wasn't necessarily what you would consider fun, but I believe it was a necessary life change in order to move forward. So if you find yourself and can relate to this story in any way, maybe it's not the exact same story, but maybe you're, in a, you're just in a really, really bad place. And through this, this COVID season that we've been through and, and just losing your dream and just trying to stay afloat that you've kind of 
found yourself in a bad place, which is where this young lady finds herself. So this is a story um, of a family that I know very closely. <clears throat> this is very personal, so I apologize. Um, this family has four children, and obviously <clears throat> with four children, two of them are right in the middle. Two of them have always struggled to, to find their identity, to find their place in life. Um, as a result, hanging around the wrong crowds, getting involved with the wrong crowds, drug, alcohol abuse, depression, um, excuse me, just low self-esteem. And throughout the years, um, these two young ladies have just been their own worst enemies. They've, um, in an effort to figure out their way and to figure out who they are, they've been in some incredibly horrible relationships, um, bad living situations, again, the, the drug and the alcohol use, just depressed all the time. And maybe not to that extent you find yourself today, but maybe these last couple of years, you found yourself in that type of a situation. Um, well, over the last week, I believe it was Tuesday, to be honest with you, um, one of the young ladies called her mom and said, look, I'm tired of being in this place. I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of the, the drug and the alcohol uses, and I'm, I just want to, I want to change. I want a huge life change. Can you help me? Will you please help me? And so I hope you don't find yourself in a situation like that. But if you do, there's hope. God has given each of us dreams and he's given each of us a hope that we can get out of this. And we'll reference this story a little bit as we go on today, but I just wanna say good morning after all that. Good morning, welcome to Alley Church. Um, listen, if, if you're new here, I'm glad that you're here. Um, if you're returning, I'm glad that you've chosen to join, join us, that you've chosen to spend your Sunday with us. And I hope throughout time today that we can be of an encouragement to you. And if there's anything that you need, any way that we can walk beside you in your journey and in your, your effort to, to find out what God has in store for you next, please let us know. We would be more than, welcome, more than welcome to talk to you. There's people at our Connects desk out front. We would love to walk with you through life. Now, a couple of weeks ago, um, Trey, our pastor Trey, kicked us off in this series that we're talking about, Dream Big. And it's based upon this book by Bob Goff. How many folks have ever read, read one of his books? Hands, anybody ever read one of his books? Well, Sandy was telling me that uh, the first day that this was promoted, we sold out of the book. So we've got some more still out there. He is an incredible motivator. He's an incredible speaker. If you've never read any of his books, I would highly recommend you doing that because he has a way of just pulling you out of the doldrums and the, and the negative things in life. Uh, I actually cheat a little bit. I have him on Audible so I can listen to it. But it's actually Bob narrating it, so it's even better. This guy is an amazing, an amazing speaker. And I'll say this um, about the, the message that Trey kicked us off on a couple of weeks ago, that if you weren't here, or maybe you were a little fuzzy on some of the details because we kind of had a fill-in week last week, maybe you don't remember it all the way, go check it out. You can check out the video, um, the message on YouTube. I know for a fact you can get it on YouTube. And I think you can get it on your app or, or through the website. But it was an incredible message um, that Trey had for us. And I'll start off today by saying this, our ability, your ability and my ability to dream, it comes directly from God. Did you know that? Our ability to dream comes directly from God. And what I mean by that is this, you and I, we were both created in God's image. And he dreamt, dreamed, dreamt, I'm not an English major, I'm a cabinet maker. He dreamt an incredible dream at one point in time. And the reality of that dream, you see when you look in a mirror. You were that dream at one point in time. He had you in his mind when he created the earth. So he gave us the ability to dream and a couple of weeks ago, uh, Trey gave us each when we walked in here a blank piece of paper and we were encouraged to, to write down some of the dreams that God was impressing on our hearts at that time. You know, in, in, in relation to where we have been coming from these last couple of years, what is God trying to do in your life? What ambitions has he given you? What dreams has he given you? Where does he want you to go? 
And one of the key verses that we talked about was found in the Gospel of John. Now, John was an early follower of Jesus. He was one of Jesus' closest friends. Um, He was one of his disciples. And he records this for us in John 10.10. This is actually Jesus speaking. It says, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. The thief comes only to kill and steal and destroy. And just like our story in the beginning, this young lady's life has been stolen. She's been allowing it to happen. And, and all of us have done this to a certain degree or not in our lives. I know that I've allowed the thief to steal and kill and destroy some of my dreams in the past. But the positive part of that verse, and Jesus continues, but I have, but I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Yeah, the thief comes to steal, but Jesus says, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. Jesus wants us each to live a life that is full, to live a life that includes him and where he's guiding us and he's leading us and he's giving us these ideas and these dreams and helping us to fulfill them. And so, you know, as you're thinking about your list, I I would encourage you to write it down. If you haven't done that already, if you haven't started a list, maybe you're thinking about something this morning in, in, in relation to where you are, and where you have been, and to where you feel like God is calling you. Hopefully, there's some new or rekindled dreams that you're thinking about. So today, as we continue on, I want to tell you another story about a man named Saul. Saul was a first century um, Pharisee. He was bound and determined his whole goal in life was to squash out anyone who followed Jesus. His whole goal in life was to squash out, eradicate, get rid of what they called in the first century the way, being anyone who followed Jesus, anyone who believed in Jesus and followed him. His goal was to, whether he arrested them or killed them, I don't think he cared. He just wanted to get rid of them. And Jesus interrupts his life and says, no, I know this is your goal, but this is my goal for you, and this is how I want to use you. And his life was fully changed so much to the point that he actually even changed his name. Now, how many folks have ever heard of Saul of Tarsus? Saul of Tarsus. How many folks have ever heard of the Apostle Paul? Same person. Saul's life was interrupted. God gave him a new direction. And the story is found in the book of Acts. Acts is the fifth book in our New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Acts is the recorded history of the early church. Um, It was written by a man named Luke. He was a doctor. And it starts off, and we're going to start off our time together in Acts 9. It says, meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He wanted to get rid of them. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues and to Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoner to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? asked Saul. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. There was this light, this flash of light that knocked Saul to the ground. And as a result, he was blind for three days. The voice that he heard was Jesus himself saying, look, stop what you're doing. I want to use you and I want to do something new in your life. I want to use you in a new way. Now, very shortly after that, uh, Jesus speaks to another man named Ananias. Ananias was an early uh, early first century Christian. He followed Jesus. And Jesus gives them some directions, say, look, I need you to go meet this guy, Saul, and help him to regain his sight. Well, again, Ananias is a first century Christian. Saul is trying to get rid of the Christians, so what do you think he's thinking? I'm not going over there, it's a trap. You're gonna kill me. The story continues. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming, as you were coming here, has sent me to you so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fall from Saul's eyes and he could see again. 
He got up, was baptized, and after taking food, he regained strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, isn't this the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who called on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priest? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful, baffling the Jews in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. Saul's focus was totally changed. And that's where we want to start our time together today with it, thinking about your dreams and thinking about the things that God has pressed on your heart. Changing your focus. Change your focus. Giving your full attention to what you believe God is placed on your heart. Thinking about your current situation and where you are now, and I can re relate to that. I think about, you know, I'll go to work every same time every day. And maybe I go to lunch with the same two or three people. And I go to the same two or three restaurants. And then I go home and do the same thing. And then I come and do it again the next day. And the next day. And the next week. And the next month. If you find yourself there, think about that in your life. Think about where you are in your life. And as you think about that, ask yourself the question, is this really what I was made to do? Is what you're doing now really what you were made to do? And if not, you need to change. You need a new beginning. Just like the story we talked about in the beginning, the young lady, she, she came to a point in her life where she needed a change. She knew she needed a change. Her focus had been drastic, just very similar to Saul. Like all of a sudden, boom, I need to change. And it's not always easy, is it? It's not always easy to make a change. But if that's something that God's calling you to do, that's something you need to do. And then I think about, you know, the more fun things. Sometimes there's just too many choices. You know, when I was younger and had a lot more energy, I had more ideas in my head. You know, I, I can do this and then maybe I can go do this and then maybe I'll do that and all oh, that would be cool. And you, you got so many ideas and what's the end result? You don't do anything, do you? <laughs> Not really. So I think about, you know, I can relate to this to, um, well, my wife and I, she's sitting right here. We'll often sit down and say, hey, what do you want to do tonight? You want to watch a movie? Yeah, let's go watch a movie. And so we'll sit down, we'll get the blankets out, and we'll snuggle up on the couch, and we'll, we'll pull up Netflix. And we'll sit there and we'll watch the first preview. And nah, let's watch the next one. Pretty soon, we've sat there for two and a half hours. We watched 100 previews, and we look at each other and go, I'm tired. You want to go to bed? Yeah, let's go to bed. <laughs> There's just too many choices, right? Same thing with, with the dreams and things that God has placed on our hearts. So we need to focus down and, and, and get our list down to something that we can actually accomplish. Does that make sense? So there's a list of questions to help us to narrow our list down. And they'll be on your screen here if you want to take some pictures of them or copy them down. If, you're, if you've got some things on your heart that you, you feel like God's leading you to, this will help you to narrow, narrow down your list. The first one is... Um, what seems most important to me? Of the things on your list, what seems most important to me? What seems to make the biggest impact? What thing would make the biggest impact in my life? What do I get most energized or most excited about? What, what gets my blood boiling? What gets your blood boiling? What aligns, this one probably should have been first, what aligns with the way that God has wired me? What aligns with the way that God has wired you? What talents and abilities that you have align with the dreams that he's given you? And then what do you want to be remembered for? This is the one that I call the, the funeral exercise. And I've actually done this. I, I, I've written down what I would like my kids to say about me at my funeral. What are some of the things that you would like to be remembered for? And if what you're doing now, what you're currently doing doesn't align with that, you need to change. Take the list, narrow it down, circle the, the things that, where you're feeling like you're being led, and then ask the question, break it down once more. Why do I want to go after this particular ambition that God has placed on my heart? Uh, in his book, Dream Big, Bob has this quote. I think it's kind of cool. It says, it feels powerful and dangerous 
I get excited about the possibilities and envision what it would be like when one, one of my ambitions that just explodes into the world, it releases love, hope, inspiration into the lives of those around me. Do you have one of those ambitions that you've just kept below deck in your life? It's tired of waiting. That's a pretty cool quote. So focus, find your focus, focus your list down. And then once you've done that, just try it out. Try out your list. Take your ambitions, I have this note here, take your ambitions and your dreams out on a date. Test the waters, test them against scripture. Test them against what truly what you feel God is, is calling you to do. You know, in the story in our beginning, I don't know that there was any testing needed. I think that this young lady just needed to dive in with both feet and go for what was right in front of her. She needed to just go for it. But when there's an opportunity to test it, I think that's a cool thing to do. I mentioned this earlier, I'm a cabinet maker by trade. And if I've got a, a project that's super intricate, it's detailed, it's probably expensive if it's detailed and intricate. And I don't just go for it and build the whole thing at once. I'll take scrap pieces of material, cheaper, lesser expensive pieces of material, and I'll do a little bit at a time. I've got an idea of how I wanna do it, and I'll do that part of it. If it works out, then I'll do it on the finished piece. Does that make sense? That's kinda how I do life. Well, when we talked about Paul, the, the story of Saul or Paul, um, was he great at first in his new role as taking the gospel to the world? Was he great at it? Did he make some mistakes when he, on his brand new journey? Well, one of the passages talks about when he was preaching that this person falls out of a window while he's preaching. So I don't know, did the guy fall asleep? Was he boring or, or was it just an accident? But you know, we may or may not be great at what we do from the very, very beginning, but we can start small and just try it out. You know, don't quit your job all at once if you're, if you're dreaming of starting something else. Keep your income. Don't let that, you know, don't handicap yourself by getting rid of your jobs and starting something new. Just do it on the side. You know, see how it works out. Um, so, it, you know, by doing that, by doing it a little bit at a time, one of the cool things is that you won't have any regrets. You'll know that you've tried it, that you gave it a shot, and you won't have any what ifs or regrets. Um, you know, one of the key things that I would encourage you not to do, one of the things that I, I, do, I did in the very, very beginning is I would chase after the dollar bill. I would chase after the, the attaboy and the pat on the back in your new endeavor or wherever you feel God's calling you. Don't chase after the dollar bill. Chase after serving folks. Chase after what God is calling you to do. God calls you to love one another to love him and love one another. So, so whatever you're gonna do, do it in love, do it for the right reasons. Don't just chase after the dollar bill because you'll end up in the wrong place in the end based upon experience. Um, I know that for me, when I'm at my happiest, I'm serving others. I don't like being up here, but God has gifted me with some incredible insight and some incredible life experiences that I feel like I can share with you. And if I can in any way inspire you based on scripture, I wanna do that. And so I know that I'm my happiest when I'm serving others. And I'll give a plug for Adley Action Day. I know that um, Bethany mentioned that a little while ago. It's been a few years since we've done an Adley Action Day, but I know the lives that were changed through that. So, and, and I've gotten a report that a lot of you folks have already signed up for that, so that's awesome. Um, but there's still room for anyone who wants to serve. Um, make sure you sign up for that. Um, so find your focus. And then try it out and then just don't get distracted. We, we have a tendency to get distracted. Um, sometimes looking at other people's lives can be a distraction and how we compare ourselves to others. Um, by doing that, we miss out on our own dreams. We miss out on our own uh, things that God has given us and, and put specifically in front of us. Um, in the story in the beginning, the young lady, if, if she were to listen to somebody else, Let's be honest, her friends, they wanna pull her back down because that's their comfort zone. And so don't let that happen in your life. Don't let somebody pull you down. Misery loves company. How many folks have heard that one? And it's true, isn't it? Misery loves company. 
you know, don't look at somebody else's life because it could be a death sentence for the dreams that God's given you. Bob Goff writes this also in his book. It says, you'll never find your purpose by comparing your life to somebody else's. And that's 100% true. You'll never find your purpose by comparing your life to somebody else. And truth be known, we've all done this to a degree or one another to a degree. We've, we've all tried to compare ourselves to others, trying to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. Um, I've got a friend who is an incredible businessman. Um, he's got an incredible business mind. And because so, he's got multiple businesses. He has multiple houses. He's a millionaire time and time again. And, you know, for me to compare myself to him, it's not gonna happen. That's a temptation for me because we're the same age. We grew up together. Um, I am far, 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 far from a millionaire. All right, but God has gifted me with some incredible talents and the gifts that are different than his. God can use me in a different way. And so I encourage you not to let others influence what you do in a negative way. Don't try to compare yourselves to others. Um, in the book of Ephesians, the apostle Paul was Saul, now he's the apostle Paul. In Ephesians 4, 1 says, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. And it's not highlighted there, but I would, I would highlight and underline that word you. I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received because the truth of the matter is, is that we've each received a specific calling, a specific thing that we're, we're gifted with and the talents that we have. And if we use those, oh my goodness, the sky's the limit. So find your focus, try it out. Don't get distracted and then look for opportunities. There are people out there that want to help you in your new endeavor. There are people out there that can guide you in the correct direction. That can be your go-to voice when you need some help and you need some advice. And those are the ones that are not pulling you back down, but those are the ones that are pushing you forward and they're trying to help you. I did a message a few years back. It was based upon a book by uh, Craig Rochelle. It was called Divine Direction. And one of the things that really hit me was that it was encouraged to take small steps. Take a little step, evaluate yourself, figure out if it's the right direction, refocus a little bit, take another step. Make sure that you've, and, and they will put people around your life that can help you to do that. Surround yourself with people that'll help you take those small steps. They'll help you to reevaluate and refocus and then move forward. But just don't quit. Don't ever quit. Talk to those that you trust. See if there's anybody that can help you and rally around you. Most of the time, truthfully, our dreams and our ambitions and our ambitions, they're just bigger than we are, which is a cool thing. That's a good thing. We need help. It's a great opportunity to pull God in on this and ask him to walk with you through this, give you the clear vision and the clear direction that he's calling you to go. Pray about it, make room for God to speak to you. Allow him to be your co-pilot in whatever this endeavor is that he's placed on your heart. Allow God to amaze you with the opportunities that he has provided for you. There's a, a verse in Proverbs that says, in their hearts, Humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. We all have plans in our hearts, just like Saul did in the very beginning. But the Lord, he establishes our steps. So just allow God to do what only he can do. Surround yourself with the people who can be the encouragement for you. So as we close our time together, I just hope and encourage you to just to change the way that you think. These last couple of years, again, have been rough on all of us and have got us thinking in a way of just surviving. Change the way that you think. and Realize that you're not stuck. You're only stuck if you allow yourself to be stuck. God created us for more than just to survive. He created us for more than just to survive. And think about that verse in the beginning. Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. So realize that that opportunity is still in front of you. He wants us to live the lives that he created us to live. So this week, I pray that you process everything that we've talked about today and see what God has in store for you as you dream a bigger and better life. Will you pray with me? 
Father God, I just thank you so much for the young lady in the beginning in the story. Um, Father God, I just pray that the steps that she's taken are real, that they're not just another smoke and mirror, God, but that she really wants the true life change that you've placed on her heart, that you'll help her to give her the courage to follow through, give her the courage and, and the guts to seek out the people who will help her to do that. And then, Father God, I just pray for each and every person in here. I thank you for the dreams that you've given them, for the direction that you've given us, you've given each of us, Lord. And Father God, I pray that you will be clear with the direction that you're given each and every one of us, Lord, and that we'll follow through on it. That we'll focus our list down and then give it a try, God, allowing you to do what only you can do. And so God, I just thank you again for today. I thank you for this time together. I thank you for um, books like this Dream Big book from Bob Goff. Lord, I just, I thank you for the resources that we have. I thank you for the freedoms that we have in this country to worship you freely and for the opportunities that each of us has. Nothing's really holding us back except for ourselves. So God, I pray that we don't do that anymore, that we allow you to lead us and guide us. And it's in your name we pray, amen. Now, I've got some questions for you, but I had one other thought. Um, as you write down your, your goals and your dreams and your ambitions, there's something magical about actually putting pen to paper. You know, maybe you're, you're thinking about something, you've got something on your mind, but there's something super magical about putting pen to paper. And from experience, I can tell you that that's true. Some 32 years ago, when we were first married, we were encouraged to do that, to write down some goals and some aspirations and some dreams that we had as a couple, as a newly married couple. And we actually did that. We put pen to paper. And five years ago, I found that list. I have no idea what to do with it in the meanwhile. We were, it's not like we were actually reading it and following it and checking them off. We put it in a drawer. Five years ago, I found that list. And you know that most of what we had on that list has come true? It's just by writing it down. I can't explain it. I'm not going to try to explain it, but I just want to encourage you to write it down. Don't just think about it. Put pen to paper. Now, some of the questions that you may uh, want to focus on today and ask yourself over lunch, over the week, uh, based upon our conversation today, when was the, the last time that I experienced a huge life change and how did it make me feel? What's the last time I experienced a huge life change and how did it make me feel? Um, what dreams and ambitions stand out on my list that I've started to create? And what steps can I start taking to see these dreams become a reality? So thank you guys. Um, have an incredible week. I look forward to seeing you. I won't be here next week. I'll be on vacation. But sign up for Alley Action Day and I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> well, thanks so much again for stopping by. If you have any questions or would like to get connected here at Atlee Church, we would love to help or serve you any way that we can. And if God is doing something awesome in your life, we'd love to hear about it. You can email us directly at stories at atleechurch.org. And if you would like to support the ministries here at Atlee financially, you can go to our website and click the top tab, Give, and that helps us continue to get these messages out there and make a difference in the lives of so many. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we hope to see you again next week.